Welcome into the ESPN FC studios. I'm Alexis Nunez here with Janusz Michalik, Alejandro Moreno, and Stevie Nickel. Lots of pandemonium going on in Liverpool as Jurgen Klopp was officially unveiled today as the next manager of the English media. Very excited, as you can bet, all the headlines had to do with the German who is hoped or tipped as the man that will steer Liverpool back to the glory days. Alex first press conference with that goofy grin we know and love and his charismatic charm. He joins Liverpool 10th in the table and he spoke to the assembled media about his ambitions for the club. If we want, this could be a real special day. If we want. And if we are prepared to work for it, if you want, if you are patient enough, all these things, if you, if you want, then we can start in a very difficult league with opponents that are big and bigger and bigger maybe but in a special Liverpool way, we can be successful. When Jose Mourinho arrived on the scene, he pronounced himself the special one, and Klopp was asked the same question, what he would call himself. So I'm a totally normal guy. Um, I'm the normal one, maybe, if you want this. <laughs> yeah. You've had a, such a, a grand reception here today. Is it all a little bit surreal? Has it, has it sunk in the news that you are the new Liverpool manager? Yes, of course it's surreal. That's absolutely. But um, I have to accept. <laughs> I woke up this morning and I was um, yesterday night we signed the contract and then this morning I was manager of um, Liverpool FC. It's not so important what people think when you come in. It's much more important what people think when you leave. On a match day, the stands will be heaving with 45,000 screaming fans. And I went down on Merseyside to speak to just some of them about this new appointment. Uh, he's got a lot of charisma, a lot of, um, a lot of emotion. He's very uh, passionate. I think that reflects the, the fans. He's a bit of a character, so hopefully he can bring a bit of excitement. I thought Rogers was a bit boring and he just did a lot of talking, so hopefully Klopp can you know, bring a bit of excitement back to Anfield. I think he's a good manager. Yeah, I think fine. he's on the same level as Jose Mourinho and Arsene Wenger. So Klopp keen to reiterate that he's just a normal guy and not influenced by all the glitz and glamour that he's received today. But as he walks away from the world-famous cop, Klopp knows this is the start of an exciting adventure. All right, so excitement indeed. Stevie Nicol, our very own former Liverpool player. What did you make of his introduction? I, I thought it was fantastic. You know, this to me, this is going back to Liverpool's roots. This is a guy who, like a Paisley and a Joe Fagan, mm. a Dal Gleish, men who tell you straight, mm. no philosophies, no skitting around what, what's what's right, what's wrong. This guy is as normal as it gets, as he said. It's about hard work. All the values that Liverpool were built in mm -hmm. are built on. That's what he's about. That's why this is a great, great signing. You know, the charisma that people are talking about and Liverpool fans are excited about is also the charisma that needs to get the best out of his players. So mm -hmm. even though Jurgen Klopp looks like the sort of guy that you would want to take out for a beer, in the end you want him to get the very best of what he has available. And even if he gets the very best of what he has available, that's where I have questions. I don't know that this talent pool for Liverpool is good enough to really compete at the highest level. Uh oh, oh, you're rallying up. No, 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 no. no, no it's not. On. There's a reason why the there's a reason why the where they are. <laughs> well, not just because of Rodgers, but yeah. because the team's not good enough. Well, and, and this guy will sort it out. This guy said he's in charge of who comes and who goes. Yeah, that, and that's all fair. My 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 only concern is that you're not walking through that door. That Glish is not walking through that door. Steven Gerrard is not walking through that door. You're, uh, you have a team in place in which Jordan Henderson is the captain, which he would have been a nice player to have in your team. But What's the captain of Liverpool... Yeah, but you've got, you got to try and look to the future. Well, oh. yeah, you've got to project into the future, but the future is now. The future is yeah. now. But, but, but it's how you approach the players, what, what, what that little extra you can get out of them. I mean, this Liverpool team is not going to change drastically just because Jurgen Klopp is here. But I think it can change a little bit. I mean, look, look that charisma. I, I don't think you have to be a Liverpool supporter to kind of get a smile. I'm sure everybody is looking at it and says, what an interesting personality. If I'm a player coming into training, after all the cliche, cliches and philosophy of Brendan Rodgers, look, Brendan Rodgers was a good manager, but even at their best, uh, you know, it was kind of gloomy yeah. right there. So that changes a little bit. But 
but you're right. It's not going to change immediately. Klopp it's going to take time. But I think some, you know, new broom in, broom in, in town, right? So we'll see what he gets out of Firmino because he's familiar with him. And Rodgers didn't really buy into him just yet. And some players will get a second lease on life. So don't, I think that's what we'll Don't get me wrong. I love me. I love me. Oh, I know what he brought the word up. He said patience. We need some patience. And right. we do. Ali, were you surprised that they were able to land Jurgen Klopp? Because I know we did have a bit of a discussion mm -hmm. where you said, why would Klopp want to go to Liverpool? It's, it, it, it's looking like a sinking ship. Well, and my point to that effect was that you look at the players available and the current situation of Liverpool. The, 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 the great feedback that I've gotten on Twitter that hasn't been all that positive, by the <laughs> way, was regarding my questioning that the Liverpool history doesn't get you results on the weekend. Yep. Great Liverpool history and the great success that guys that like Stevie Nichol have built for that club is fantastic. But it doesn't do anything for you when you go and play the game on the weekend. By the way, yes, sir. He's already resurrected a sinking ship in Dortmund. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not. So, so, my point is that he is more than capable of doing the job. Had I been him. I would have taken that year off that he had talked about, mm -hmm. and I would have see I would have allowed some pieces but, to fall because there might have been better opportunities available. It, That's all. He said it. It's his comfort zone, isn't it? His background, where he comes yeah. from, minds the way minds play. Borussia yeah. Dortmund. You know, so so I think some people kind of you know uh, uh, go towards that because they feel comfortable in that situation. And by the way, I don't think you were wrong in saying that you know that you didn't think that Jurgen Klopp could come to Liverpool because I wasn't sure. I had the same doubts, not just because of players, but I. Think I think he was actually capable of getting to a club that's already in the Champions League, but I think it's going to be a big job to get them there, and I think he's one of those few people that kind of won that hard job and then look good in the end. To your point, Ali, this, this tells me that he's got substance. You know, we always think that a guy with his reputation and where he come from, right, I'm going to hold on until I get the biggest and best job and the most money. All right. And that's, that's another reason why I'm glad this guy's here, because He's all about substance. It's not just about the money. It's not just about hopefully getting to the best club he that's going to spend a, a he's ton the of highest, money. Uh, he's uh, the highest paid uh, uh, manager uh, in England now. And so uh, uh, he's getting more money than Wenger. Before we pump this so. balloon <laughs> to no end, <laughs> I don't think it, so. the, the biggest thing I got out of him is, you know, let's see if I'm going to be smiling, you know, three, four years from now. So we got to wait and see, but I think this is a positive. That's very true. Well, we know that the expectations are high, but I think they should at least aim to finish in the top four and get back some Champions League football. Here are the odds for Liverpool to finish in the top four. Stevie, are you buying into any of these? Of course you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're fifth yeah. favorites, so Listen, Spurs are still below why. them. You are, and I'll, but I'll the tell you why. I'll tell you why I'm saying four. yes. Because too many of the teams in the Premier League are, are just so inconsistent that... That's why Liverpool's got a chance. You can say it. You can say it. There's, there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of average teams out there in the Premier League that allow Liverpool to have the chance, a realistic yeah. chance to push and into that, the top and four. And that's why I think they, they can maybe get there. Ali, do you believe that they will finish in the top four? After I've given you all the spiel about the fact yeah. that they don't have players? <laughs> no, of course well, not. You're taking over from Dan and the silly yeah. questions. <laughs> I, just, I just told you why, no. if I had been Jurgen Klopp, I would have taken it. That's what he said. <laughs> what? Look, look, here's well, the you, can, you can have a you, manager, by the way, maybe. You said that you didn't like the players that you had available. However, That's <laughs> Under Rodgers, you would never have said, even though they're only three points out of the third place, you would have never. At least you've given him that chance. It's not going to be easy, though, for sure. I'm pretty sure Stevie's still picking them to finish in the top four. Easily. He's all right, well, we're he's, told me, he's told me like 10 he's times already. He's getting emotional today. The top four. <laughs> all right. All right, well, we know one of the biggest criticisms that Brendan Rodgers got was that he didn't have enough control over this so-called transfer committee and the players coming in and out. Well, Jurgen Klopp had something to say about that as well. For me, it's enough that I have the first and the last word. In the middle of these two words, we can discuss about everything. Right? And if, if it took, it will it don't take too long time because we only want to discuss about very good players. And it's uh, really, and it's discussing on the highest level. I hope so. Yeah? And that's all what we have to do. Well, this man right here, Sir Alex Ferguson, the former Man United manager, is a big fan of Jurgen Klopp. He's got a new book out, and it is called Leading. As we know, he did that very well during his long stint at Man United. He also had a comment on this whole transfer committee and whether it really matters or not. If you don't trust your manager, why have him there? Mm. You've got to trust your coach. He is the man and should be deciding 
which kind of player he wants, the type of player, the position he wants, uh, his character he wants. It's the manager who knows more than anyone about what he needs for as a coach. And, and I think that there's a lot of this happening in the game now, this money ball ideas about looking at um, statistics of players and bypassing the manager's thoughts. You know, I think it's wrong. Already, Stevie, do you agree with Fergie? Uh, listen, Fergie's 100% right. To me, mm -hmm. to me, this is common sense. I agree. If somebody said to you, I want you to do this job, I'm going to get you the pieces, and if you don't make it work, you're at the door. Why would, why would you take that on? How about, if you really want me, I'll bring the pieces in, and if it doesn't work, I'll walk out the door. You don't have to fire me. That's, and yet, that's where I see it. And yet the realities mm -hmm. of today's world are different in terms of the decision-making process. So the key for a guy like Jurgen Klopp in common, he had to have made it very clear to whoever he was dealing with is, listen, I'm going to have to be big part of the decisions. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I cannot sign a contract. I have to have a major say as to who comes and who goes, because otherwise it's not he, worth it. He's, he said he's having the say, not a major well, say. First the and say. last say, the only. And, and I think he knows he's going he's to have to do it within the reason, but I think if you look at him, uh, his track record is that he can find players, not necessarily for top dollar. He knows he's not going to be going after Ronaldo's Messi and that, those, uh, those type of players, but I think he can spend the money, he knows where to look for them, and you know, uh, I think that's, I still think there's somebody above him there of course that's always can say yes or no and that will happen by the way I don't care what he says it will happen and sometimes just like in any job you're gonna say okay uh, you know all right well everyone is singing Jurgen Klopp's praises but guess what Arsene Wenger actually has Brendan Rodgers is back he says this on Rodgers sacking let's not forget Liverpool has not won the championship since 1990 they came the closest to winning it two years ago and now I don't know why really the rational reasons why they have made that decision so quickly. Stevie. <laughs> he just, he's just answered his own question. <laughs> he's answered his own question they haven't because they haven't won it for 18 years and the owners under Brendan Rodgers thought that this guy's not going to win is it but and that's saying, why he's gone. He's also saying that he, he brought them so close to it so you know why not just give him another chance. The kind of argument to that is the fact that <laughs> They had a real opportunity to win it, and they blew it in the end. <laughs> yeah, they, you you could argue that they choked it in the end. They choked it away. And if that's the case, that also points a finger straight at Brendan Rodgers. All right. Welcome back. Euro qualifiers continue today here at the Group E standings. England maintained their 100% perfect record with a 2-0 win over Estonia. I think they're in. I think they're in. They're yeah. definitely they're in. in. That is for sure. And you can bet that the newspapers have already picked up on that one. So Raheem Sterling, he netted a goal. So did Theo Walcott netting the opening goal. Harry Kane had a chance, but he did not manage to get okay. one. Move over, Wayne. Okay. Uh oh, uh oh. That didn't take long. I know, right? How many, how many chances is this guy going to get to play centre forward? <laughs> <laughs> Every season, uh, Wenger will play him at centre forward and it's, oh, this is the future of the club. <laughs> England are doing it now. He's going to bomb two or three games, and then he's going to be back wide. It just makes you wonder, right? I mean, you look at this English team, and, you know, Wayne Rooney, okay, he's still there, but I always remember a team that was uh, led by Alan Shearer, Gary Lineker, you know, you mm -hmm. had Gaza in the midfield. I look at this squad, and I just don't see anything. Yes, some promising players, you know, within a year, are they going to uh, make a jump like this, as you've mentioned? I just wonder. So, fair play to them to make it, but uh, I'm not saying the future isn't bright, but I would worry about uh, Euros. Goodness gracious, they had a 100% win record, Alejandro. The do you have any more faith in England? <laughs> do I? <laughs> Hold on a second, wait a minute. Or the do, team. Do I have faith in England? Come well, on. You don't have to be English to have faith in no, England. No, well, Based on no. what you see when the players I, are playing. Yeah, but what I also have seen is that what was supposed to be the golden generation of players yeah. going into international tournaments, and it's Gerard, and it's Lampard, it's this guy, it's that guy, Wayne Rooney, and it didn't happen for England. They're 100%, and that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. 27 points, yes, that, that's all very impressive. And then they get to the major tournaments, and they're unable to provide that same level of performance, or simple as, as the fact that they play against better competition, and then they just go. Well, they're in, a, they're in a position where they get simple groups because of the standing in the game, mm. and they always get to the, the competitions. They get an easy group. 
It's not but because they've got great players. Switzerland doesn't make that group that easy, though, does it? You fancied them before England, didn't you? There is a. There, there's a. <laughs> what's, what's she doing? What is she doing to you? What is she doing to you? Are you, I'm go, just are you saying, coming after me? I'm just saying. I'm being objective. There, there is a positive in it, though, right? Because that transition probably needed to take a, a long time ago with the likes of Gerard and Lampard. I think they kept it a little bit too long. These young guys, at the very least, made it there. So I think everybody would be conscious. I would hope in England to know that it, it's not a bad thing to be there with these young players. The bottom line is they've had better teams got into the big tournaments and failed miserably. Mm -hmm. No reason to suggest this team will be any better. All righty, well, let's move elsewhere in the world, down to South America. These are the Commonwealth 28 oh, World Cup qualifying standings right now. Chile, they're at the top. They had a nice 2-0 win over Brazil. Argentina, they're somewhere there in the mix, down at seventh. They're missing Lionel Messi. They also suffered a massive defeat to Ecuador. Alejandro, Argentina and Brazil, massive powerhouses, not just in South America, but in world football. Which of these two losses shocked you the most? Argentina. Uh, I think Brazil, you look at this version of Brazil, and we've talked about it, it's not your father's version of Brazil. It's not the magic and the flip. <laughs> My father. Yeah, your father. <laughs> his father. Stevie's father. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you don't see, outside of Douglas Costa, you don't see a team that will take players in one-on-one -on -one situations, and you don't see the creativity in the final third they become very average as compared to the standard that they have set for themselves. So losing away to Chile is not a surprise. However, Argentina at home, and not only that they lost, but the way in which they lost, in which Ecuador, it's not like they were hanging on to the result. No, Ecuador went and pressured Argentina. They went and got possession of the ball. And Argentina, so very inconsistent in the way they play, but more so than anything, it's like they were a Sunday pickup game. Everybody doing their own thing individually, Angel Di Maria running that way, Javier Pastore turnovers over here, and you just see a team all out of sorts, and I think you just have to point the finger at the fact Lionel Messi is not there, they don't have a point of emphasis as to who's going to carry the possession for them. All right, well, coming up next on ESPN FC, we'll have lots more from Shaka Hislop's interview with Sir Alex Ferguson. There's no real domination in the Champions League today because if you look at the times that Real Madrid went to five times, Bayern went three times, I three times in, uh, in a row, there's no team won it twice in a row since the Champions League started. Mm -hmm. So that tells you how difficult the Championship is. I think it's cyclical. I think the... English teams will have their spell as they did you were talking about 10 years ago. I think that will happen again. I think they'll, they'll find their moment. Sir Alex Ferguson there weighing in on the topic that we have been discussing a lot. Why English teams seem to struggle in the Champions League. Stevie, what did you make of his response? Is it cyclical? Uh, I think he's, uh, again, 100% spot on. Um, particularly with the amount of money that the Premier League clubs have um, to try and go and buy the best players. Eventually that money's going to pay dividends and eventually another English Premier League side uh, is going to win the Champions League. It, it, it's a matter of time. You know who else has money? Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich. Those mm -hmm. players can those go... Teams, those those teams, teams have always had money. I know, but those They've teams... They've always had money. Know, so what, th what happened teams, to them when the Premier League teams were winning? They still had the teams, same amount of money. Huh? They still, had, they still had more so money than MBLs. My, the point being is that those teams can buy and go after the same sort of players that the Premier League teams but would buy. But that's the question I'm asking you. They had, I'm not they sure had what, more, I, what you're asking me. <laughs> well, what I'm asking you, when, when the English Premier League teams were winning so, the Champions League, so Barcelona's Real Madrid still had more money or as much money as them. So Barcelona bought Luis Suarez, Real Madrid bought, bought Cristiano Ronaldo and Gareth Bale from English clubs. And that may continue to happen as well. And as long as those teams are around, and as long as Cristiano Ronaldo is around, and as long as Leonel, Lionel Messi is around, it's going to be difficult for any of these English teams to yeah. break through. And that's why Fergie's uh, saying it's cyclical, because those guys are going to go away. Yeah. So unless, unless they're replaced, that may be the change. It's all maybes. Yeah, no? He, he, I mean, he, the money eventually will win you something. You can't tell me that Manchester United, Manchester City, you know, if you want to put Arsenal in there, will not win it again. I mean, we may have to wait two or three years, but I think it's only the grind. Louis van Gaal has talked about it. The grind of the Premier League, I suppose they don't change the games for you to give you more rest, but uh, they will win it. Well, don't don't, uh, don't bring up the grind of the, of the Premier <laughs> League, uh, because when they were winning, nobody was complaining about that, the grind of the Premier that, League. That when is, they were dominating, nobody was complaining that, about the grind of the Premier I'm League. I'm not complaining. That <laughs> is, 
grind. That is no, true. No, he said they're grind. I, oh, the well, because it's true. true. Because it's true. He didn't, in, he didn't in mention Spain, Arsenal you, as well. <laughs> Not a good example. In Spain, you play <laughs> Friday example. if you ask for it, or wherever you may be in Syria. It, it doesn't happen in England. You just play. So, I mean, fair play to them. Much harder competition than some. Indeed. All right, well, coming up next on ESPN FC, is Diego Costa calling himself fat? We'll find out after the break. This international week has been absolutely disastrous for some of the world's top players. Look at this injury list going on. I mean, this could be an all-star team for anyone. Sergio Aguero, David Silva, Karim Benzema, Mario Gotze there, Alvaro Morata. Oh, Juventus will not be happy with that one. That's all right. Ivanovic needed a break anyways. Ouch. You mean he didn't? Chelsea are delayed, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Mourinho's like, oh, you yeah. <laughs> goodness. That well, was. someone who wasn't injured is this man because he wasn't even called into the Spain squad. Diego Costa, this is how he's been in the Premier League and it probably explains why. Look at his stats from last season compared to this season. Yeah, that's not good. You mean he's going down? <laughs> All right, well, this is probably the reason why. Or he says, I got injured at the end of, at the end of last season, and then I went on holiday. Uh -oh. Maybe I got out of my <laughs> diet, and when I came back, I was <laughs> not the way I was supposed to be. I was a little bit overweight. <laughs> that affected my game. You can be selfish and blame it on the manager, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so it's just a little extra weight. The answer. I mean, we know the current situation at Chelsea, and everybody's trying to find at least one reason why it is so bad there. Is Diego Costa onto something? I, I appreciate his honesty and, and the fact that he comes out and essentially calls himself fat. That's all right. <laughs> no problem. There, it's okay. But did everybody else not follow their diet either? Because Chelsea That's across true. the board have not been very good. We joked about Ivanovic. He's been terrible. But it hasn't just been Ivanovic. It's Fabregas and it's Matic and so on and so forth. And Terry, and you just go across the board. It has been a very difficult start to the season, to say the very least. And I, to some degree, I have to say that once one started playing bad, then the other one started playing bad, and it became mm -hmm. contagious. And Chelsea had no recovery. Stevie, as someone who loves a good holiday, you could <laughs> stick a 22 stone man up front for Chelsea, and they would only have one goal. Because they're not creating chances. The centre forward lives and dies by supply. The or by is food. Chelsea, <laughs> Chelsea are not giving him a supply. So whether he's two stone or 22 stone, it makes no difference. Yeah, I mean, this, this will be the last time Jose Mourinho gives his players two, three extra weeks uh, in the summer. He knows it's a mistake. Obviously, he didn't prepare the team uh, properly because it's not just him, it's everybody else. And, uh, you know, that's the bottom line. Uh, Chelsea aren't playing up because, you know, one or two or three uh, guys. The team's not prepared for the season I'm uh, also, properly. I'm also not buying charismatic charm. He joins Liverpool 10th in the table and he spoke to the assembled media about his ambitions for the club. If we want, this could be a real special day. If we want. And if we are prepared to work for it, if you want, if you are patient enough, all these things, if, you, if we want, then we can start in a very difficult league with opponents that are big and bigger and bigger maybe, but in a special Liverpool way, we can be successful. When Jose Mourinho arrived on the scene, he pronounced himself the special one, and Klopp was asked the same question, what he would call himself. So I'm a totally normal guy. Um, I'm the normal one, maybe, if you want this. <laughs> Welcome into the ESPN FC studios. I'm Alexis Nunez here with Janusz Michalik, Alejandro Moreno and Stevie Nicol. Lots of pandemonium going on in Liverpool as Jurgen Klopp was officially unveiled today as the next manager of the English media. Very excited as you can bet all the headlines had to do with the German who is hoped or tipped as the man that will steer Liverpool back to the glory days. Alex First press conference with that goofy grin we know and love and his emotion. He's very uh, passionate. I think that's the flex, the flex of the fans. He's a bit of a character, so hopefully he can bring a bit of excitement. I thought Rogers was a bit boring and he just did a lot of talking, so hopefully Klopp can you know, bring a bit of excitement back to Anfield. I think he's a good manager. Yeah, I think he's on the same level as Jose Mourinho and Arsene Wenger. So Klopp keen to reiterate that he's just a normal guy and not influenced by all the glitz and glamour that he's received today. But as he walks away from the world-famous cop, Klopp knows this is the start of an exciting adventure. 
All right, so excitement indeed. Stevie Nicola, our very own former Liverpool player. What did you make of his introduction? I, I thought it was fantastic. You know, this to me, this is going back to Liverpool's roots. This is a guy who, like a Paisley and a Joe Fagan, mm. a Dal Gleish, men who tell you straight, mm. no philosophies, no skitting around what, what's, what's right, what's wrong. This guy is as normal as it gets, as he said. It's about hard work. All the values that Liverpool were built in mm -hmm. are built on. That's what he's about. That's why this is a great, great signing. You know, the charisma that people are talking about and Liverpool fans are excited about is also the charisma that needs to get the best out of his players. So mm -hmm. even though Jurgen Klopp looks like it's the sort of guy that you would... <laughs> yeah. You had a, such a, a grand reception here today. Is it all a little bit surreal? Because it feels like you're the new Liverpool manager. Yes, of course it's surreal. That's absolutely. But um, I have to accept. <laughs> I woke up this morning and I was, um, yesterday night we signed the contract and then this morning I was manager of um, Liverpool FC. It's not so important what people think when you come in. It's much more important what people think when you leave. On a match day, the stands will be heaving with 45,000 screaming fans and I went down on Merseyside to speak to just some of them about this new appointment. Uh, it's got a lot of charisma, a lot of, um, a lot of